we're looking at uh, the new Star Wars Blu-rays that are coming out. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Not really a huge story, but it's uh, it just came out, I think, either today or yesterday, that they're launching out some new versions of the Star Wars Blu-ray movies. Um, I was struggling to pull it up. Like, were you seeing that and saving me? I did a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate yeah, that. It, so there's, there's um, for every single movie they've got a new cover, I honestly think they look really cool. I was hoping it'd be more of like a steelbook look and then more of like a like a cool, um, huge box set maybe. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it sounds like they're going to do 4K, I think, the following year in 2020. So this is just the basic Blu-rays. Uh, if... I'm honestly going to wait for 4K. I already have all of the Blu-rays. So um, for me, this isn't really like a must-buy. I feel like most people that are Star Wars fans are going to have the 4Ks by now anyways. Um, so unless they have like a really cool 4K Steelbook box set next year or something, then it's really not a huge thing for me, but it's cool. Yeah, I say we run through them real quick because I also want to be able to split this off from the main podcast so that people can see, you know, the new for sure. ones yeah. coming out. We just run through them real quick, just maybe a minute apiece. Yeah. Um, the episode one one is fine. Um, they have this weird, all of them have this weird floating head look, like, but this one is the worst in that term. Yeah. Like, it has um, Liam Which Neeson's... keeps up with the theme of the entire series, that episode one is the worst, you know? Yeah, it has a really disjointed looking um, cover. Uh, Darth Maul, one of the most underrated Star Wars villains in all of existence, because you need, you need to watch The Clone Wars. He gets so good. He's, I was, yeah. He's a recurring villain in the Clone Wars, and he's amazing in it. And he's a recurring villain a couple times in Star Wars Rebels, and he is fantastic. I'll have to check that out, yeah. But he is the biggest waste of time in the movies. They do nothing with him. That sucks, yeah. Um, he is looming in the background with Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan right in front of him. You don't even see the handle of Obi-Wan's lightsaber. You just see, like, the, the blade, and that's it. And it white it whites out almost half of his face, like it... Like, the glow from it, like, almost covers part of his face a little bit. in a weird way, like the coloring. Um, you have Liam Neeson's massive head side profile there. Queen Amidala, you know, Padme is right there in the middle. I don't know why she's not the center of the movie I was gonna at say, all. I don't feel like she's, like, a centerpiece. But... And then you have Anakin down in the front with his visor down and some pod racers coming outside of the border of this thing in the background. It's all, like, a silvery blue it just looks okay. Um, that's kind of how I feel about a lot of these is they look okay. Uh, the Attack of the Clones one, again, it's got Jango Fett in the background there, a Republic gunship flying. Um, the best Padme Amidala outfit ever uh, in center stage in the front. Very cool. It was looking. the uh, torn Padme outfit. Um, you know, when the, uh, I don't even remember the thing's name, that gladiator creature like slashes her back and it becomes like a tube top. Yes. Speaking yeah. of Hayden, he's in right behind her with like the you just took the last slice of pie look on his he face. He is so <laughs> upset, man. It, well, it's very clearly from like the Tuscan Raider scene. You know, when he goes after the Tuscan camp. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. But he has like his lightsaber looks red, which it's not red in this movie at all, which is silly looking. Um Qui-Gon's just kind of hanging out. You can barely see Yoda in the background, along with Mace Windu. A and then the clones. I mean, like, it's it's an improvement on the Phantom Menace one, I guess, but it's is still that, okay. Oh, by the way, is that Obi-Wan on the side? You said it was Qui-Gon. Is that Obi-Wan? Oh, oh, yeah, it's Obi-Wan. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't Did sure. I say Qui-Gon? I was still yeah, thinking I about Qui-Gon. <laughs> no, I know. I wasn't sure. I just wanted to clarify. No, Obi-Wan is still hanging out. Um, And then the third one's the best out of the three, but it's it's not amazing. It's, it's good. I, I think, like, the... Having that uh, battle of the heroes in the front, you know, against Anakin and Obi-Wan was a good choice. Um, this is actually almost the original cover, though. Yeah. It doesn't seem movie. like a lot has changed with that. No, you got the Vader helmet in the background, Obi-Wan's head, um, Padme's head, Anakin's head. For some reason, C-3PO's in the background here and some... I mean, the only really cool thing I've never seen on a cover of three unless I'm just hallucinating, is the Death Star being built. Oh, okay, yeah. That's cool that that's in there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's fine. Uh, I think the original trilogy is where it starts to look a little better, actually. It looks really crisp there. Yeah, like, yeah. the image just looks good. Because you have, you know, Luke Skywalker, uh, Leia, in this next one for A New Hope. You have the old Alec Guinness Obi-Wan in the background. For some reason, Han is tiny in this image, and so is Chewie, even though they are 
I would say, as iconic as Luke Skywalker to the Star Wars franchise. There's some, there's just some weird choices. I don't personally love covers like this where certain characters are a lot bigger than others. Like, the scaling is weird, isn't Especially it? if it doesn't align with the story as much, you know? But, no. I mean... This one I'm fine with. It's okay. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think it's it looks really clean. I like the purple color there, too. I think it's a really cool-looking cover, but... Um, they have a random Y-Wing in the background, even though Y-Wings didn't really do much in that movie. They were just kind of at the final battle. Right, right. Um, they all got destroyed. Uh, then moving into five, this one's... I don't know if it's better or worse than the four one. That one's kind of messy, looking at it from a distance. For yeah, me, there's um, like there's tons of clutter. <laughs> there's just so much going on there, you know? Well, and um, do you see this in the very background by the Vader helmet? It's like Vader fighting Luke, and it's just tiny. I know. I feel like that should have been like the main thing, you know? And then have some other stuff in the background. If they would have done something where they have that in the center, kind of like what they did with 3, and then have other stuff in the background. But they have so much going on in that. It's a lot to look at, you know? Oh, it's a ton. And then for six, um, this, I think this is the best looking out of the ones we've looked at so far. I would agree. Yeah. Because it has, it's more clean. It's just the Death Star in the background along with some, a B-Wing, uh, the Falcon, which is really just used by Lando mostly in this movie. Yeah. Um, right in front of Luke. To his left, I guess it's behind him. To his left is Vader again. He has to be on every single cover, I guess. Um, with Yoda looking up at Luke's crotch, like thinking like, wow, that is a snack, dude. I love that, dude. Um, then you have Leia next, kind of next to and in front of Luke with Jabba blending kind of into the background of the Death Star. Which is Th weird. This he is, shouldn't blend in. No, dude. this is the problem with these, though, is they look very cluttered. They do. There's just All a of them. lot going on. Yeah, I wish they'd tighten it up a bit. But um, seven might be the least cluttered because there's still a lot going on. Though it is, yeah. But like the three main characters are at the forefront. Then in the background, there's a couple ships: the villain, um, Han, Leia, Luke. Yeah. Randomly, Phasma. Yeah, Phasma's in there too. Yeah, I, I would say that that one's. Well, I was gonna say that one's probably my favorite so far. But then what's okay? I have such not great feelings about, about the last the Jedi. eighth one. Yeah, it's just it's... that the cover wouldn't do it for you anyway. No, it but wouldn't. But this cover no. isn't strong either. A lot of these covers are just tons of characters thrown onto the cover. Yes, it's like yeah. you took a shotgun and just blasted Star Wars characters onto the cover, of and the now film. they all fit, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. but they yeah. don't even all fit. They're all weird scales, and even the ones down here are weird scalings that aren't the same. Like Rose is in the background and small, but Finn's head is massive. Finn's head is bigger than Rose's whole body. Yeah. It's just stuff that yeah. looks silly next to each other. That's The Last Jedi. I know we're kind of going through these faster now, but it's it just gets hard to talk about them. Right. This is basically just the Rogue One cover. For it the doesn't Rogue look One any one. different than how I remember it. I, I'm sure it is a little, but it's more like the coloring is different. Yeah. It, it always kind of looked this way with the Death Star and um, Jyn Erso. Right. K2SO. I think this stuff is new with like the walkers in the front but otherwise it's these just aren't memorable no that's my problem and they're each a different color but i don't think any of those colors mean anything i think they're just chosen at random I agree. this is the only color that applies because solo was always marketed with this yellowy orangey color. yes it was yeah so i get that one and actually this cover looks okay i think that one looks really good actually i, yeah. I like how that one there's not so much going on they've got like the main people that you see um, and I think they did a really good job with that one, actually. Yeah, because that one is just, um... I hadn't seen that one yet. That one's probably my favorite of the whole bunch, to well, be honest. That one's just the Aaron Reich, uh, I think that's his name, right? Alden Aaron Reich? I don't know. Uh, that Han Solo, and, uh, Chewie next to him, Kira underneath him, you know, a couple of the pirates, uh, you know, you've got Lando there. It's pretty clean. Yes. And it, it matches the actual film's coloring, so I think that looks good i'm surprised works well yeah and that's really all there is it, it's a weird time to buy these movies again because even this article like stated that like you said they're very likely coming to 4k in 2020 yeah so i mean just uh for for me and, and i think we're we are on the same page we are i agree with you it's 4k at this point you know blue if it's something that you really like um and it's something that like a star wars or like just something that you're really passionate about 4K is how you're, how you're going to get your movie moving forward. It sucks that it's so expensive, um, but 
But like for something like that, I hope it's like a Blu-ray collection that you can get, you know, where it's or a, a Steelbook 4K collection. Because um, otherwise, it's not really worth getting all of those new covers just because they're new covers. You no. know, like it doesn't make sense to me to go out and spend twenty dollars a movie for nine different movies or ten different movies and spend all that money for no reason for cover art when I've the cover art that I've got already is already pretty cool. Um, I'm, I have the movies already. It's not really an upgrade in any way. It's just art. No, it's just ten eighty p Blu Ray still. Yeah, and it doesn't. The art doesn't blow me away. So it's just it's. Meh, it's not really on my radar, to be honest, and I'll be looking for the 4K is where I'm at. So Me too. I would definitely love to collect steelbooks of them if they put any effort into them. Yes. 